We begin here in Washington, where the House of Representatives Select Committee investigating the January 6th assault last year on Capitol Hill has received crucial documents to advance their probe. But some of them, handed over by the U.S. National Archives, were found torn up by the former president. The documents from Donald Trump's White House tenure had to be pieced back together by archives staff. The select committee had requested from the archives records surrounding the events of January the 6th. Those included presidential diaries, visitor logs, handwritten notes from then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. They also requested a draft executive order on election integrity that members of Congress suspect may shed light on the former president's determination to overturn the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Donald Trump sued the committee and the archives last October in an attempt to block the disclosure of the records. But the case ended up before the U.S. Supreme Court and it declined to stop the document's release. So almost 800 pages of documents were handed over to the National Archives and Records Administration. Documents obtained by the January 6th panel include diaries, staff schedules, handwritten notes, speeches and remarks. Marks. The archives said in a statement that some of the documents were found to have been torn up and then reassembled. Thousands of Trump supporters, of course, stormed the Capitol on January the 6th last year. The assault was fueled by false claims made by Trump that his election defeat was a result of fraud. The attackers sought to stop Congress from certifying Joe Biden's victory. More than 700 people have been charged in connection with the riot. More than 100 police officers were injured while seven people died in connection with the events of January the 6th. Donald Trump, meanwhile, continues to tease another run for the presidency. Speaking at a rally in Texas last weekend, he in fact suggested he might provide legal assistance for those who waged last year's assault if he runs and wins in 2024. If I run and if I win, we will treat those people from January 6th fairly. We will treat them fairly. And if it requires pardons, we will give them pardons because they are being treated so unfairly. This hasn't happened to all of the other atrocities that took place recently. Nothing like this has happened. What that unselect committee is doing and what the people are doing that are running those prisons, it's a disgrace. It's a disgrace. We will treat them fairly and we will take care of the people of this country, all of the people of this country. For more on this extraordinary story, let's go live to WEON's correspondent Susan Terrani, who joins us again today from New York. Susan, I have in my hand some papers that I'm using right now. It's the script for this program. I will, in all honesty, in all honesty, probably recycle them once it's over. But this is absolutely extraordinary. The president of the United States, according to the National Archives, Donald Trump, was in the habit of routinely ripping up and crumpling and throwing away papers that under normal circumstances would have made their way to the National Archives as a record of his presidency. What are the consequences of all of this for the former president? Supporters of the president might argue that uh, the president is a minimalist and doesn't uh, like clutter. But in all seriousness, I think, uh, according to co constitutional scholars, it all depends at the end of the day, uh, right? You know, it could be a crime considering um, that if, if he's destroying government property and, you know, considering the fact that he was president, uh, you know, these are documents that are from his administration. Uh, so if, if his intent was to destroy evidence and government property, then that would be 
be uh, a problem. And this is a direct quote again from a constitutional scholar that a president does not own the records generated by his own administration. The definition of presidential records is broad and Trump's own notes to himself perhaps could be safe if these were his notes to himself. But if, again, if these were some kinds of evidence and the intent was to destroy evidence, then the consequences could uh, perhaps be dire. We'll wait and see. Um, are the rules different when it comes to Donald Trump? Maybe. Uh, but, you know, this is pretty serious. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, let's just not forget that this came out in the Washington Post. And according to the Washington Post, even early back, uh, there was an article in 2018 by Politico that um, Donald Trump's aides were concerned that he had this habit as early as 2018. And this was sort of a nuance. It's sort of, a, you know, something that they, they kept talking about and saying that, um, you know, they it, it took a lot of time for them to sew back and tape back these documents that he kept ripping up. It's an extraordinary story. <laughs> Yeah, quite extraordinary. And this habit apparently dates back to when he was running his own business. He was in a habit there of throwing documents away that uh, he didn't think had any uh, useful purpose after they were over. But Donald Trump went to the legal mat to try and stop this paperwork from getting into the hands of the House of Representatives Select Committee. Is he worried that now these documents are in the hands of investigators? They, the investigators, are uh, lining up a situation in which Donald Trump himself may be asked to come and face questioning uh, with regard to the events of January the 6th. This, this panel has been very uh, questionable uh, and has become very bipartisan in a lot of ways because we also saw, you know, representatives, Republican representatives come out and say that should the Republicans take over 2022, they're even going to start investigating uh, the January 6th uh, panel. And they're already questioning whether or not it's legitimate or not. So it's very bipartisan, despite the fact that they really wanted to make this a, uh, I'm sorry, it's very partisan, despite the fact that they wanted to make this a very bipartisan uh, commission and really look into the events of what happened there. We'll have to wait and see what happens after 2022. Uh, but, you know, whether or not Donald Trump, they can convince Donald Trump himself to really come in and answer questions is yet to be seen. I think a lot of his supporters are also banking on the fact that uh, the Russia spy investigation and the Russian meddling investigation turned out to be a hoax. The fact that he was impeached and then acquitted was a hoax. So, you know, he's playing a lot of that. Um, he's playing to his base. Uh, so we'll have to see, uh, you know, how far this really goes and whether or not even this panel will will go as far as, as calling in Donald Trump uh, for questioning as well. A lot of moving parts. So, you know, um, a, a lot of politics at play as well. I'll tell you what, Susan, this is definitely a story you and I are going to be coming back to. Susan Tarani, Weon's correspondent, live for us today on the streets of New York City. Thanks very much once again for being with us.